أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى بيته الطيبين الطاهرين اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد وأجل فرجهم السلام عليكم جميعا ورحمة الله وبركاته a very warm welcome to all of our dear guests our brothers our sisters watching this show live on Sufiya TV where we are honored to be in the presence of our esteemed scholar Sheikh Ayub Rashid who will inshallah today be helping us again with our questions, our queries, and our issues regarding this holy month of Ramadan, as well as some clarifications on some aspects. Indeed, today is a very holy night. The night to come is known as the 23rd of the holy month of Ramadan, the night of Laylatul Qadr. And as Surah Al Qadr mentions itself, it's better than a thousand months. With this in mind, I would like to welcome forward our dear respected Sheikh to elaborate for us once more some of the uh, virtues and merits of this holy night. And we welcome our dear Sheikh with a loud salawat. Ahsan, brothers, we have Jazakallah khair al jazak. A'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa sallallahu ala sayyidina Muhammad wa alihi tayyibin al-tahirin. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Respected brothers and sisters, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Allah the Almighty has given us another opportunity in order for us to ask Him for whatever we want for our future. Allah has given us in our hands the decision to choose whatever life we want to live. Allah has given us another opportunity to ask him to remove, to take away whatever we see it's a problem in our lives. Allah has given us another opportunity to pray for our families, to pray for those who are in need, to pray within our families if there is something which is wrong, something which is causing us distress and problems then Allah has given us another opportunity in order for us to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to remove that. Why Laylatul Qadr is not just one night, but it is in different nights? It's because maybe you miss the previous night you are supposed to pray, you did it. You are busy asking Allah for something else. Allah has given us opportunity again to say, you know what? If you forgot something, this is another opportunity. Uh, we know for those people who like to go for sports, uh, games, you know there are those final minutes ref can give you in order for you to try to win uh, the game. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is more merciful, more, yani, we can't even compare him with anyone, has given us, given us another opportunity to say, you know what, this is your moment now. Make sure you go for Laylatul Qadr, pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for whatever you want. This is another opportunity now. And this reflects the question why sometimes when we do ibadah, we have to repeat certain words, certain adhkar a few times, either three times or four times or seven times or ten times. It's because of that. Maybe in the first time you say, but it doesn't come from the deep, deepest part of your heart. Maybe the second time you say, you don't focus on what you say. Maybe the third makes you to say, now I know what I say. Allah has given us this opportunity for Laylatul Qadr in order for us to make sure we go in the proximity with Allah or within the proximity with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We go closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in order for us not to lose hope and that's the most important final point i want to mention here some of us we lose hope because of the calamities we see in this world some of us we lose hope because maybe we depended on people and we thought they will help us but they let us down some of us we lose hope because why we invested heavily on something which we thought it will help us but then we came to realize that, no, our choices were wrong. So when we lose hope, we lose everything. When we lose hope, we lose ourselves. When we lose hope, we may become kafir. Yes, kafir. Kafir in the sense of what? We don't see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as the one who is omnipotent. 
the one who is able to do anything and everything. He says in, in the Holy Quran, Ya ayyuhal asrafu ala anfusihim la taqnatu min rahmatillah. Oh, you who have violated the limitations of committing sins, oh, you who have crossed the limits, do not despair out of the masses of Allah. So now he doesn't want us to lose hope, but we lose hope because of our nafs, our uh, al-amara, shaitan, the people we are around. This is another opportunity for us to say, oh, at least there is another point where I can find that hope, connect with myself, connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, let me start afresh. For everything we do, when we get stuck, there is another beginning, another fresh start. Laylatul Qadr is that fresh night, fresh start. Let us use the opportunity for us to go closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inshallah, we'll keep the viewers of Safir TV in our duas. We ask you to do the same for us, inshallah. Barakallahu fikum. وصلى الله على محمد وآل محمد اللهم صل على محمد Thank you, uh, dear Sheikh. That was very beautifully put. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the tawfiq to make the most of this holy night and in these yeah. days to come, inshallah. Um, dear Sheikh, the question which um, follows um, regarding this holy night is that um, if our destinies, it is said, can be shaped or influenced on this night, then do we really have free will? Yeah, mashallah, very important question and very good question. Destiny can be shaped, definitely. There are two things here. Number one is uh, Qadr, like inna zalnahu fi laylatil Qadr. Qadr decrees. That Qadr, there's another, let us use two terminologies. One is al Qada wa al Qadr. Qada and Qadr, these are decrees and measures. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decreed everything in this world. And the measure he has done also. So Allah knows when something is created, the way it will progress until the end, he knows. So here there's a third thing which is known as knowledge of Allah. Ilmullah, ma'rifatullah. His knowledge of knowing how the thing will progress and how it will end, it is with him. There is Qadha and Qadr. According to what we do, Allah knows if we follow this step, these steps, this path, we will be successful people or not. Now, but with saying all those, or all, all that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us opportunity on Laylatul Qadr to, to shape our destiny. So there is no Jabr. There is no jabber, there is no force, there is no something which to say, you cannot change yourselves. And we can understand this in an easy way. Why do I say to Brother Zuria, Brother, pray for me? Just now we say to our viewers, please, be viewers of Safir TV, pray for us. We will pray for you. Because we believe each and every one of us, when you ask Allah sincerely, he can change the destiny for you, for me, for each and every one of us. So, according to the school of Ahlul Bayt, Muslim, and this is a wonderful school, this madhab, this school of thought, this, this way we follow to, to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through Ahlul Bayt is so good. It says there's no jabr and there's no tafweeb. It is the, the, the line between the two, meaning what Allah has not left us alone, it doesn't interfere, the word interfere in court with our lives, but at the same time, it doesn't force us to do whatever we do so that we cannot change that which we do. Dua, the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, makes it very clear. La yaruddu al-qada'a illa dua. Nothing will shape or will change the destiny except dua. Dua. In surah, Al-Furqan, Surah number 25 in the Holy Quran, last ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in part of that ayah, قُلْ مَا يَعْبَعُ بِكُمْ رَبِّي لَوْ لَا دُعَاهُكُمْ The meaning, say, Rasulullah, tell them, Allah would never care for you if it were not for your dua, for your supplication. So it means that what, when we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he cares for us, 
When we don't ask him, he cares for us. But when we do dua, he cares more for us. Layali al-Qadri, these are the nights of dua. The nights where we can ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for anything. And there's one short dua which is very beautiful. It says, Oh Allah, uh, if I have wronged myself, the meaning of the dua, and if you have not forgiven me or to change my destiny, from now I ask you to do so. So now we ask Allah to change our destiny. We ask Allah to forgive us because we have that ability with us in terms of dua. And we pray for Allah to accept our duas, inshallah. Inshallah. Thank you, Ansmah Deh Sheikh, for that beautiful Mom. message. Um, Deh Sheikh, the next question which follows from here regarding this holy night is that there are many aman which are recommended. Um, specifically, we're told to recite Surah al Kabut, Dukhan, and Rum. Um, is there a specific reason why, perhaps? Is there a message that's been trying to get through to us through these three surahs? Yes, yes. There, there are certain uh, aims, goals, why we recite these three surahs. Number one, it is a sunnah of Ahlul Bayt, salam, whenever Laylatul Lail Qadr was, they used to recite this, these three surahs. Number two, Recitation of the Holy Quran in any night of in any night of Shah Ramadan, it's highly recommended. And specifically in the Layal al Qadr is highly recommended. These three surahs, Dukhan, Rum, and Kabut, in it, the word Laylatul Qadr has been mentioned, but in a different form. Fi, uh, in, 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 in the, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we have revealed this Quran in Anzalnahu fi Laylatin Mubaraka. We have revealed this Quran in a blessed night. Which blessed night? Laylatul Qadr. Fiha yufraku kullu amrin hakim. In it, every, every wise decision is taken in, in this night. So the surahs are, are reminding us about Laylatul Qadr. So if, if we were to, to discuss about which surahs are mentioned? Which surah mentioned Laylatul Qadr in the Holy Quran? Most of us will jump and say Laylatul Qadr, Surah Al Qadr, but it's not just Qadr. It is also Dukhan, Rum, and Ankabut. Number two, Laylatul Qadr. Let us take us as as if it is the night when we are about to be resurrected. We are in the night which we are going to be resurrected. That night preceding the day of resurrection is Laylatul Qadr. These surahs discuss, discuss about the day of resurrection also. It is as if, remember, when you do your a'mal on the nights of Laylatul Qadr, remember not to forget to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when the day of resurrection comes, make sure you be in a good position. Don't forget to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to save you with the calamities which are there. And then, of course, there are many other issues which are connected in terms of Quran. So we get the blessings of reciting the Holy Quran in this special night. Wallahu ala. Thank you so much, De Sheikh, for clarifying that matter. Um, De Sheikh, uh, we've been sent some questions by our viewers. Um, the first one which has come through is, why was Imam Ali al-Islam buried in Najaf? Okay. Imam Amirul Mu'minin Ali bin Abi Talib alayhi salam was buried in Najaf because he said he gave his wasiyah, his will, that when I die, bury me in Najaf. Okay, that's number one. So, Al Imam Al Hassan Wal Hussein family of Imam Ali alayhi salam, they honored that. And let me take only one minute here, it's very important. When someone, before he passes away, he leaves will and he says, when I die, I want you to bury me in a particular location, we have to honor that. So, in terms of fiki issues, if someone says, I want to be buried in Najaf, near Amirul Muminin, alayhi salam, in Wadi Salam, many people do that. We look at uh, the state of the affair. Is, is it possible, is it feasible for us to bury this particular individual once he, he dies in Najaf? If we say right now it's not, then we can bury the body in normal graveyards. And then we say this is amana. This body, we keep it amana in this grave 
until when the time comes, we will move the body there. We have to do that. So Amirul Mu'minin gave the will. But there is information that Amirul Mu'minin was told by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa you will be buried in a place where near you there is a grave of Nabi Adam and Nabi Nuh alayhi wa So when we go to visit Imam Amirul Mu'minin in Najaf, if you, you remember, sometimes we look at uh, the ziyara, it says, Assalamu alayka, peace be upon you, O Amirul Mu'minin, or the one who is buried here near Adam and Nuh alayhi salam. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told him that you will be buried there. So it is an honor, it is a merit. Unfortunately, sometimes when people go for ziyara, they don't remember or they forget that there's Nabi Adam and Nuh are buried there. Because our our, our love is towards Ali bin Abi Talib, and we just want to go hug the grave, which you cannot do, hold the, the, the windows. It's, it's good, but we need to remember that there is Adam and Nuh, alayhi salam. This is honor to Amir al and honor also for every Zai. When you go there, you don't just get the ziyara of Ali bin Abi Talib, but you get the ziyara of these noble two messengers of Allah, alayhi salam. Thank you, Dan Sheikh. And may we be able to go to Najaf, inshallah, really soon, all of our viewers and uh, Ila, yeah. participants today. Um, Dan Sheikh, I think we have a caller on the line as well. Um, to our dear caller, Asalaamu Alaikum. To our caller, Asalaamu Alaikum. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Yes, please. Thank you, Sheikh. So I had uh, one question relating to the nights amongst us right now. Um, among us right now, rather. Um, sometimes in a'mal we hear, you know, we repeat certain lines 70 times. Um, we repeat certain lines 100 times. Um, one question I've asked myself while almost repetitively doing this year on year. Uh, number one is, is you know, as children we were told, if you can't do it a hundred times, do it ten times. Is there a reason why we should do it a hundred times? Is there an impact on the soul we are unaware of? Um, and why is there sometimes things said 70 times, things said hundred times? So, inshallah, you've understood my question, and, and I thank you in advance for, for your, your, your answer. Thank you, Sheikh. Barakallahu fikum. Thank you very much to you too. Uh, the question is very nice, very valid, and we need to reflect on it. When we do our amal during the night of Qadr, or any other night, but here we are talking about Laylatul Qadr because it's in front of us. Why do we repeat certain adhkar or certain words? We repeat tasbih, for example, istighfar 70 times, and another 100 times. The reason, number one, is because this is the way we receive the information from the giver of the information. The giver could be Rasulullah, could be Amirul Muminin, could be any Imam of Ahlul Bayt alayhi wasalam. They said, when you sit down to do this amal, repeat this 70 times. Or he used to recite 70 times. So we do, we follow his way. That's a very simple answer. But... In terms of reflecting, again, the impact maybe may come because why we, when we say, imagine, imagine my brother, since the time of our bulu, how many guna we have committed, how many sins we have committed, how many violations we have done against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So now if I can say, astaghfirullah or I say, Astaghfirullah Rabbi wa atubile, one time. I think there will be no impact there. Because why? I say, Astaghfirullah one or once for all the sins which, which I have committed. I ask Allah for forgiveness and I repent to Him. But now, if I say 70 times, looking at the time of Bulu, how many salah I prayed after the time of salah. How many days maybe? I was I was just young boy. I didn't pay much attention to Salah. There were some days maybe. 
I told my parents I have prayed. I didn't pray properly. Maybe there are days when I prayed without wudu properly. Maybe there are days and nights where I backbited. Maybe there were days my mom, my dad wanted me to do something, but I did not do it properly. And maybe, and maybe, and maybe. So when you say these astaghfirullah, you look and reflect on whatever you have done. Astaghfirullah Rabbi wa atubu ilayh for this sin which I have committed. Astaghfirullah wa atubu ilayh for this one and another one. You can see there will be impact. When you, 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 you arrive at the place of dua or wherever you are and you recite dua in this approach or with this approach in mind, you will see differences within you without having this kind of thoughts. So definitely there will be impact when you focus of what you say and why do you say it, not just how you say it. I understand clearly when your parents, for example, used to say, you can say just 10 times, no problem at all. In their mind, it is as if they were telling you, remember, it's not the quantity, it's the quality of your, what you say. 10 times for you, that's perfect. For other people, no, they need to go even 700 times, not just 70. So 70, you can say, or 100 is just a maximum for the day in order for us to reflect and in order for us to uh, try to change ourselves. One time is not enough. Maybe twice is not enough. 70, yes. For others, as we say, maybe that even is not enough. So it is to follow the method of repeating and reflecting. So it's not just repetitive, but repetitive with an aim and purpose of focusing on what we say. And may Allah accept, inshallah, from all of us, inshallah. Inshallah. Um, no. Thank you to our dear Kula for his very wonderful question and to the Sheikh for his beautiful answer. Um, dear Sheikh, the next question we have um, following this is um, from Brother Hussein. He says, Assalamu alaikum. Um, how does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala communicate with Angel Jibra'il? Does he talk to him directly? Okay. Ahsan, thank you very much, Brother Hussein. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his communication with Jibra'il, with other me uh, messengers, with uh, angels, is not through words as we know. You talk to someone and he hears. For him, let us take the eye in Surah Yasin. Inama amruhu idha arada shay'an an yakula lahu kun fayakun. Whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants for anything to happen, for him it be and it is there. So he doesn't need to use voice in order for Jibra'il to, to hear what he says. Allah may make a way for him to make Jibra'il to know that Allah wants this. And Another way is when Allah, if we say he communicates with Jibra'il through voice, then he creates a voice. He doesn't have a particular voice which you can say that this is the voice of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he can create a voice like the one which he was talking to Nabi Musa alayhi salam. Or the one which he made it to Rasulullah on the night of Mi'raj to speak to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So this, this is his way of communication. It doesn't have a voice like we can say that, oh, oh, oh that is the sound of... of Ramadan. Okay. This question is very important, very valid too. Mashallah, all the questions are very valid and very good. But when we talk about uh, maintaining spirituality or spirituality after Shah Ramadan, here is where we see uh, some of us, we get struggle. And I think the question is because of that. Why? Look at ourselves. During the holy month of Ramadan, we have very strict programs. Individually, family, community, and so on and so forth. With your family, mother is participating with your program, spiritual program. Making sure that everything is done according to the prescribed times. Father, the same thing. You too. Other siblings, same thing. So we are all together as a team. After Shah Ramadan, that sense of uh, community in terms of ibadah is, is lost. Why? Because you're on your own. Well, well, you want to have breakfast at 7? Yalla, yalla, it's up to you. 
uh, nine or not, it's up to you. But Shah Ramadan, no, we are all together. So that sense of team building, team working after Shah Ramadan is not there. So now how can we maintain it? Whatever you have done during Shah Ramadan, you need to continue with that. Whether it is recitation of the Holy Quran and there are narrations from, specifically if I'm not wrong, from Imam Zainul Abidin alayhi salam, where he says, I love the people who finish the Holy Quran, reading the Holy Quran until the end, and then they start again, and then they start again and again. These ones will have a specific position uh, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So take this as your program. After Shah Ramadan, Masha Allah, the multitude of recitation of the Holy Quran, which you, you had during the holy month of Ramadan, or you have now, continue with this after Shah Ramadan. Let us have a way of being closer to the Holy Quran after Shah Ramadan. Namaz, prayers, recommended salah. Try to keep those mustahabbat, even if it's just two rakats, between Dhuhr and Asr, you pray two recommended salah, keep it. Try to do it after Shah Ramadan for certain period. Until now, when you gain that, you say, this is part of me, proceed to another act of mustahab. Do it. And then continue like that until when, inshallah, it becomes part and parcel of you to say that, now I think I have that shield which has protected me. I will not do this particular guna. I will not swear, for example, I will be a good person because of whatever I have done during the holy month of Ramadan. And another thing which is practical, try to be with the people who can help you to maintain spirituality. They could be your teachers, could be family members, could be a community which you have established that this one, I think it will help me to raise my ma'nawiyat spiritualism after Shah Ramadan and be in touch with people of spirituality when you think you are going down. You need to be re to recharge your battery of iman by being closer to those people. So be in touch with ulama, visit centers, establish link with them. After Shah Ramadan, you need that. Be closer to them, inshallah ta'ala. Now. Um, thank you once more, dear Sheikh. Um, the next question we have is, um, can we trim our hair whilst fasting? Uh, the answer is yes. We can trim our hair while we're fasting. You know, one thing we need to remind one another here is like uh, is uh, the importance of us knowing w w which things will break our fast. Trimming the hair is not one of the things which will break your fast. But if you, are, you, you go to the barber and he uses the spray, you know, with water. That one you need to avoid. For example, he says, okay, if he's not a Muslim, he, will. he wants to spray it near your nose, and maybe there is a, 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 a slight uh, mistake can be done for you to swallow that water. That one avoid. But normal trimming, no problem at all. And if you don't, if you want also, don't use these uh, uh, aftershaves, because to smell perfume while you are fasting, for the intention of smelling, it's makruh. It's not haram, it's makruh. Uh, we don't know why, but uh, avoid those kind of spray and so on and so forth because they may uh, cause some sort of problems uh, in your throat. Wallahu alam. Thank you once more, dear Sheikh. Um, I believe we have a caller on the line as well. Um, to our dear caller, Asalaamu Alaikum. Hello. Hello, Salam Alaikum. Wa Alaikum Salam, Sheikh. Um, thank you very much for this Q and A session. It's really, really helping many people, including myself. Um, I just have a quick question. Uh, one of my sisters is very heavily pregnant, and she wants to do the amals for Laylatul Qadr like the 50 rakats and, you know, the du'as and everything. But she gets very, very tired towards the end of the day because um, she's been trying to fast. 
Um, do you have any advice for her and women in her position um, who who want to do all the amals, but for various reasons like being heavily pregnant or being um, diabetic and insulin dependent? Um, you know, is there is there anything that she can do if she can't do the fifty rakats and uh, you know and all the other amals? Yeah, thank you very much, my sister. May Allah accept, inshallah, your amal and the amal of thank all. You. Thank you. Thank you, Sheikh. All no, right, sir. then. Uh, hey. Thank you. I'll leave it with you. Thank you, dear Sheikh. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We have one more call on the line just before you answer, Sheikh. Okay. Call. Uh, please, sure. um, to, to our next caller, assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Can you hear me? Well? Yes, please. Uh, yeah. How, how, how are you both doing, Sheikh? Alhamdulillah. And how are you today? Uh, alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Shukrallah. I just um, had a quick question, and apologies if you've covered this already on Toba and the stages of forgiveness. I heard that there are many stages that you have to go through. How does one know that? for a sin or for anything that they're truly forgiven in life uh, in life for, for any sin when the root of the sin is taken out how can one tell within themselves and in general when the imams in their du'as for example du'a Hamza, du'a Makan, du'a Toba, we see them asking for forgiveness so profusely and to, uh, and you know away from the hellfire and whatnot. What, what what sins were they asking to be forgiven for if they were infallible how, do, uh, how would you answer that Ahsant, ahsant, ahsant. Jazakallah khairul jazak. Thank you, Sheikh. Thank you. Most welcome. May Allah bless you, inshallah. Uh, so, Brother Zuriab, we start with a question from the sister. Yes, please. Yeah. Okay. Uh, a heavily pregnant uh, sister who wants to perform a'mal during the night of Qadr. Uh, number one, we pray for this sister, inshallah, and for the uh, baby or babies to come, inshallah. They will be among the helpers of Imam Sahib al Asr wa Zaman, Ajjalallahu Faraja. What we can say here, anything which involves praying 50, 100 rakas, if that will cause distress to a sister who is heavily pregnant, please don't do that. Don't, don't pray, because this may cause other complications. But, and this is the beauty of School of Ahlul Bayt, we have many types of A'mal. Not only Salah, but you have recitation of the Holy Quran, you have Tifar, you have Dua, Jawshan al-Saghir, Jawshan al-Kabir, you have many types of Dua. You have Duas which even we don't know their names, but they are there. Not only in Mafatih al-Jinan, you can take Sahifa Sajjadiyya, and so on and so forth. So if any act of worship like Salah is going to cause distress, don't do it. Do another one which is easy for you to do. Brothers, sisters who are diabetic, they can't sit for the whole night. Because why? They cannot manage to do that. Don't do it, please. Just stay at home. Do your dua. Even if it is one line, Astaghfirullah. I ask Allah for forgiveness today, the night of Laylatul Qadr. is more than enough. Remember what we said? It is quality, not quantity of ibadah, which we need to look at. Sisters who are, for example, our daughters who are in menses, and they think, when I go sit down for a'mal, yes, you can. But don't go to a masjid, a place which is masjid, you are not allowed. You can participate in the groups of dua while you are sitting at home. TV is on, you follow the a'mal, it's fine. Don't carry the Holy Quran only. Other amal, you can do them, except uh, carrying the Holy Quran and prayers. So my advice is that don't go for quantity. Go for quality and choose whatever that we can, you can do. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is kareem. Allah is rahim. Allah knows the situation. We shouldn't put burden on ourselves in terms of ibadah and then we cause problems 
on, uh, in our health or on our health. We need to be aware of that. And we pray, inshallah, for the dua to be accepted. Coming to the question of brother regarding the tawbah, and this question also is important for us to discuss. There are stages of tawbah, yes, indeed. And these stages of tawbah, the first one and the simple one is just to say by tongue, Astaghfirullah Rabbi wa But the second stage is to reflect what are you saying. And the third stage is for you to take it from your heart. And of course, there's another stage that if there's haq, there's right of someone I have taken, I have to return it if it is amana. If I don't have it, can I approach the person and ask for forgiveness from him before asking forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? All these stages are there. If we can divide the tawbah into two stages which are main, it's important for us to know that. There is tawbah which is between me and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and there is a tawbah which I have to ask Allah but returning the rights of other people. In order for me to acquire tawbah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I need to return the hukuk nas, the rights of people. And then I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there are many other stages of uh, those people who are high in terms of spirituality, whatever thing you have eaten, make sure you put your body uh, in, a, in, a, in a thin place so that you try to trim what, whatever haram you have eaten in order for you to take it out of your body. So these stages, if they are difficult for us to achieve them, try to do what is possible in order for you to be closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the most important, say it. Don't just say Allah knows he will forgive me if he wants. No, say, Allah, I ask you to forgive me. Even you don't need to say in Arabic, in, in your language, I ask you to forgive me. Sorry, forgive me. I did this and that and that. Even you don't need to say, just having the thought in your mind that now I'm asking Allah for forgiveness, it may leave a big impact when you realize what you say or what you think and what you express by your mind or by your tongue. So this is number one. Number two, A'imma al-Athar. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Imam Ali, Imam Hassan, Imam Hussein, Zainul Abidin. And all the A'imma alayhi wa sallam. When they say astaghfirullah, what do they mean? They mean they have committed something wrong and now they are asking Allah to forgive them? No. No, not at all. What they are doing is that, number one, they are saying astaghfirullah maybe if there is something which was supposed to be done by them and they did not do it exactly the way it was supposed to be done, they are asking for forgiveness. So they didn't commit any sin. However, number two, they want to be elevated more. You know, sometimes you and me, I can say, oh, excuse me, uh, sorry. I said, this. even though I didn't do any mistake, but it shows a lack of how do we engage with one another. Oh, forgive me, please. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, excuse me. Anbiya a'imma alayhim wasalam, they have a higher level of that with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And third thing which is very important, Rasulullah a'imma of Ahlul Bayt, they teach you and me. When you have situation like where, where, where you, you, you want to ask Allah for forgiveness, say this. Astaghfirullah rabbi wa But they don't just teach you and they are sitting there, they say do it. They themselves participate in the a'mal like what we do to show us that this is the way you do it. And the way teachers say, teach me by telling me I may remember. But if you, sh you do it with your action, I will remember everything. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and a'imma alayhi wa sallam, they make it like that in order for us to say, ah, okay, you know those aha moments. Aha, so astaghfirullah, this is the way Rasulullah did it, so I will do it. And this, it gives us more, uh, it gives more appeal in our astaghfirullah or other uh, asking for forgiveness ways or asking for forgiveness. This way, when we say Rasulullah did this way, Amirul Mu'minin did, did that way. And this uh, may bring, inshallah, that full understanding. Asantu. Thank you once more, dear Sheikh, and also to our dear viewers for their beautiful questions. Um, dear Sheikh, the next question we have is that um, 
How to get rid of shaitan whilst praying if he distracts someone? It's difficult. Getting rid of shaitan is difficult. Uh, because shaitan wants to, to mislead us. So what he does is he, he comes to the places where we are quiet and calm. Salah is one of those places. So he brings us to us. How can we get rid of shaitan? Uh, we can we, st we said we can't, just to make our uh, 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 awareness that it's difficult, Shaitan will always be there. But we can when we focus. Focusing on our Salah, it doesn't start when we say Allahu Akbar, no. Focusing on our Salah starts when we go to perform Wudu. What am I doing? I'm doing Wudu. Why? I want to pray. Which Salah? Fajr, for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Your salat should start there. Those people who are aware of their wudu and they know what they are doing, they, they will be having the focus there. You will see that when they perform wudu, they are serious in their wudu, not like you are doing your wudu while your mind is somewhere else, you are answering the call, you don't know even what you are doing. So, should start from there. And then when you come to start your salat, even if you pray at home, do adhan. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. And then Iqama. And then start your Salah with Dua. Say to Allah, Oh Allah, I am that servant of you who have sinned. I have committed mistakes. I'm coming to you through this Salah. Please accept it from me. You know when you, you have this preparation, you enter into your Salah, it will help you a lot. And finally, the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, in order for you to have that uh, focus, take your salah as the last and final salah in this world. As if you're going to die immediately after salah, you will not get another opportunity for prayers. That salah which you take it like that, it will make shaitan to be away from you. And you'll be able, inshallah, to focus. And the last thing is, try to understand the meanings of the words which you say in your salah. Inshallah, this one, will help us if we put all the things together and may Allah help us all inshallah uh, thank you dear Sheikh once more um, I'm conscious of time we're coming towards the end of the show now um, the next uh, question dear Sheikh is um, Asalaamu Alaikum um, from brother Abu Muhammad he says if a person fails to pay back a lawfully missed fast of Shahr Ramadan before the next Shahr Ramadan he has to pay fidya but if he delays it for another year after that, does he have to pay for the year again? Okay. Thank you very much, Brother Abu Muhammad. The answer is yes. If we delay to pay back the days which we were supposed to, to pay them during this year. So, Shah Ramadan 2021, I missed to pay back a few days which I didn't fast until Shah Ramadan 2022. So, here I have to pay Fidia. Fidia is just to feed one person per each day. One meal per person per each day, which I delayed to fast. 2022, I didn't pay back. Now comes 2023. I want now to pay back. The same Fidia is just one Fidia. Not two, not three. According to Amaraji, it's only one Fidia. You need to pay in order for you to be uh, on the right track, inshallah. Thank you once more, um, Dear Sheikh. And the next question we have is, and this is the last question, Sheikh. Um, I say namaz e witr after my Isha namaz, as I find it to get to get up for tahajjud. Is this okay? Yes, it is okay. And and thank you very much for this question because why? Sometimes there are people who think to pray salatul uh, tahajjud uh, with salatul shufa, two rakats of shufa and witri. It has to be near fajr time. No. The answer is you can pray just after midnight. Salatul Layl, you can pray after midnight. But I know if I'm going to sleep, I will not wake up. Pray anytime after Salatul Isha. Pray your Salatul Layl after Salatul Isha. 11 rakats after Salatul Isha. Or oh, 3 rakats, 2 shufa and 1 witr. Pray them after Salatul Isha, no problem at all. Allah will accept, inshallah, from you. Thank you once more, dear Sheikh. And um, with that... We would like to take the leave permission of leave from our dear viewers. Um, thank you to all our, our dear viewers who have called in, who have asked the questions online. 
Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you all as we approach this holy night, as the Sheikh mentioned in the beginning of the program. Please remember us all in your du'as, the team at Safiya TV, myself, dear Sheikh, all of our dear families. And indeed, it makes us realize that we are in a special month, in a special night where, practically speaking, our destinies can and will be changed, inshallah, by the tawassal of the Aima, alayhi salam. There were many people with us last year who unfortunately are not with us this year and they could not experience this holy month. And we will also, inshallah, keep them in our du'as as well. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of their souls. With this in mind, we would like to take your leave. Please remember us in your du'as. Please join us also again on Friday, same time with Sheikh Ayub Rashid, where we will inshallah be at your service. Until then, wassalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.